Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Adam's Quest. In the last episode, our bandits had quite a rude awakening when one of their pranks went terribly, terribly wrong. They had thought that Hush would be an easy target for all of their tricks, so they tried to make Baryina sounds off on the outskirts of the swamp, but unfortunately all of those growls and roars summoned a true Baryina to their side. They are so lucky that Hush is actually such a strong and confident individual. She was able to take care of the Baryina for them, and they did receive a couple of wounds, but I think she's going to be able to heal them of those too. Since she is part of our shaman line, she could use the whispers of her ancestors to help lead Trip toward all of the water-breathing plants, and over time that should help mend all of the damage that he took during the battle. We'll just have to wait until he has a little bit more energy, because of course he is very, very tired after all of that commotion. The other side of the island is about to see some more powerful shifts in their family. While the babies, who are starting to all grow up and get their last gems, Quiver is so proud of them. They're doing such a good job with their sneaking training. He knows that they're going to do very, very well at the jungle as well. But he also knows that he needs to find his mate again. And now that we have our very first bluebird in the skies, roaming right above the tree in fact, maybe he would wonder if that's where Isis is waiting. Surely the bluebirds would be a great omen for our bluebird family. So it's time for him to try to find a pathway that will lead him up to the tree. We can't have him swim directly up the stream because he will end up taking some drowning damage. This current would probably send him straight down into the ocean again. So as long as we don't have any little hidden surprises inside the swamplands over here, we might be able to carve our way through the thorns. Yeah, I think the thorns are going to be the biggest issue. If there is a pathway that isn't blocked, like this one right here, we might be able to squeeze our way through and then eventually carve a clear pathway from the tree all the way down to the ports that we're going to take. So I guess that would be a good area for Quiver to send the children off to work. They will soon need to decide who is going to take on those bluebird feathers after all. So maybe this can be Kuvan's test. We need to put that big nose to work to see if there's anywhere where we can uh, sneak up to our family. So let's have Quiver make his way down the shore, and then hopefully Kuvan can take the lead, since he is so quick with those running legs. He is definitely suited to the task. Arrow will try to keep up for as long as he can, because I know he's not going to want to leave his brother behind, but unfortunately he is nearing the end of his lifespan and I think Quiver is going to realize that now. At least they're going to be able to spend their last days side by side though. Arrow can settle down in this nest and tell Quiver how proud he is of him. Quiver has really grown into himself. He's not the shy little kid that Arrow remembers. He is a leader now, and Arrow knows that Quiver is going to do just fine on his own. So Quiver is going to have a lot of confidence going into the next leg of his journey. But let's bring Duke to Duke down here so he can pick up some of those shells and follow in the shadow of this tribe. I think he's going to want to tag along on the journey because he's actually been searching for his sister for a very, very long time now. Maybe he'll share the story with little Sunspot the Scamp. With her lean body, she strikes me as somebody who's going to get into quite a bit of trouble. And that's why it's a good thing that Golden Paw is always watching out for her. He'll clear out the grass around her while he stays hidden himself. That way he'll be able to lunge in and pull her out of harm's way in case anything dangerous does come barreling in her direction. But we'll have Duke to Duke share his story about how he's searching for his family. And I do think we know exactly where his family is waiting. Up by this tree where we found little Colaire stealing all of our berries and our acorns. With that big nose of hers, it's particularly easy for her to get distracted. That's probably why these two were separated. She probably smelled all of that delicious food off in the distance, and she wanted to see if she could uh, scoop it up for herself. 
It looks like she might have a bunny to contend with on the next turn, too. But unfortunately, this is going to be where we say goodbye to Amethyst as well. But thank goodness, she's going to be able to leave behind one heir to watch after the Bluebird family. And thank goodness as well that this little baby is going to have those poison fangs. We do desperately need some more of those in our tribe so we can pick those poison berries. She is super cute though. And she even has the home island immunity gene too. So she's going to be very helpful in a lot of different ways. I think we'll actually name her Carnelia after the Carnelian gemstone since the shamans did so often have those gemstone-related names. And I think Isis would be the one to name her, since uh, she was so close to her sister, and she wouldn't want that tradition to die with Amethyst. So Isis certainly has a lot of mourning to do right now. She's going to miss having Amethyst by her side so very much. And hopefully uh, Quiver is going to be able to make his way to her side soon as well. I feel like they're both going to need quite a bit of time to mourn, and they would be better to do it together. It must be heartbreaking for Kindle to lose his mate so early on too. We'll have him pick up all of those poison berries though, so we can feed them to his little baby soon. And we can have Isis do the same. She also has the poison fangs so she can pick them safely. And we know that Colaire is going to appreciate the extra food. I suppose we'll have her pick the normal berries for now, since that bunny doesn't seem too interested in uh, poking into our territory, and that must be why, because it found a different berry bush to munch on instead. We'll have Kindle scoot his way over to the acorns, as we check out who may have picked up that pesky leech. Oh, poor Duke to Duke. Why don't we have Sunspot pick that off of you? Oh, and then we'll be able to have her dig up some of the roots, so we have a place to bury the remains of Arrow, of course, because I'm sure that would put Quiver's mind at ease. But our sneaky little babies want to make sure that Quiver won't leave without Duke to Duke, so let's have him make his way down the shore as fast as possible, and then right up to where little Kuvan is waiting. So Kuvan will stay a little bit behind, so he'll be able to carve out this pathway for his father, Oh dear, and it looks like we may actually have some bug spawners in the area too. That's a little bit more worrying. Okay, well we're going to settle you down inside this mud pile for now, and just cross our fingers that those nasty swamp bugs aren't going to jump out and infect you with their sickness. That would be absolutely tragic if a quiver managed to get so close to where his mate is waiting, only to fall victim to the sickness in the swamps. And speaking of tragic stories, poor little Kudukta has actually been trying to catch up to the bandits. He was sent off in this direction when Isis noticed the uh, bluebird flying overhead, which she figured meant that she needed to send her strongest son out to help them. So he's been clawing his way down the shore, trying his best to make it over to where those bandits are. But unfortunately, once he does arrive in their camp, introducing himself as the great warrior of the Bluebirds, he's going to find that he's a little bit late for all the action. And I'm sure that's going to make him feel very, very embarrassed as well. It might even make him wonder what on earth his mission is supposed to be if he can't uh, use his abilities to help the bandits get rid of Baryinas anymore. So he'll have to find a new way to continue his story. And meanwhile, Trick is already filling Hush's pockets with food. Our little bandit brothers were very, very impressed by her ways, of course. So they might be looking for ways to impress her as well. So we'll have Trick scoot into the grass to hopefully pick up those delicious berries on the next turn. Oh my goodness, Hush. And now you're swiping up leeches before they can even get their greedy little mouths on you. Unfortunately, we are having a bit of trouble finding more healing fruits out here, but I think she might send Trip out into the ocean next to see if he has any more luck. Typically, we do find plenty of them down in the deepest portions of the water, but of course it is risky to send somebody down there who won't be able to uh, breathe once the fruits do run out. So she'll just have to keep a close eye on him 
And of course, listen to all of the uh, whispers of our ancestors to make sure that he doesn't run into any trouble. We should be ready to pass the day again. So we'll just make sure. Oh no. Oh my goodness, did the bugs actually spawn? Oh, that is seriously tragic. It looks like they got to Quiver and they also got to his son. Because of course, poor little Kudukta was also right on top of uh, one of their spawning points. Hush was pretty close as well, and it looks like they're swarming her, but thankfully they haven't given her the sleeping sickness yet. So let's just uh, sniff around for a moment to make sure that nothing is in the area that we have to be concerned with. I do know that there was a rogue male out here somewhere, we haven't seen him in a very, very long time. Maybe he was chased away by the bugs too? Or other roaming baryenas somewhere in this grass? But either way, we're going to have to get Hush away from the bugs before that becomes a problem as well. So we'll send Trip out into the ocean to see if he can find some more healing fruits for himself. But hopefully he's not going to uh, run into any leeches in the process. So far, so good. And there's the next water plant that he'll be able to eat. So our ancestors are still pulling through for us. Let's have Trick call Hush up toward the swamplands. Hopefully it'll be a little bit safer up here. Oh no, not really. There's still bugs off in this direction. Well, at the very least, you can soothe her worries with uh, some berries. Delicious sweet berries from one of the few bushes that you can actually pick from. He probably thinks that she works way too hard. Or at least he's trying to convince her to take a break every now and then, so she doesn't end up running herself ragged. But I think right now would be a very good time for them to consider starting a family, since we do so desperately need that stinky tail in our genetics. And now that we have the bugs looming down on us, if we could possibly pull that into their line, that would be super, super helpful. So we'll put the stinky tail into Trick's mutation menu, and then the nimble fingers into his other slot. Because I'm really hoping that the bandits can possibly weasel that into their genetics, so they might be able to pick up the shells that they find in the water. That is one of the uh, telltale signs of a bandit after all, if they're stealing shells from the Krabbits. We'll want Hush to wear the mask to try to keep that on their babies. And then maybe the big ears too, since that would help us in the jungle. So we'd be able to uh, hear all of the apes lurking around in the tall grass. So we'll have her breed with him and then hopefully scoot her way way down to the shore. So she'll be a little bit farther away from those pesky, pesky bugs. And likewise, we're going to have to have Kudukta stumble his way to her side so she can see firsthand the wrath of the sleeping sickness. Now, despite the fact that you found yourself in a bit of a sorry situation, Quiver, at least we can bring you to your mate's side now. In fact, if we bring Isis over to this nest, then you won't have anything blocking you on your journey over to her side. You can even meet a uh, little Carnelia as you settle down between them both. And we'll have Isis breed with Quiver again so they can have one last baby together. I think it's very fitting too that uh, they're both going to end up passing away on the very same day. I think that just goes to show how connected the two were. And this also means that as Quiver meets little Colaire, he might uh, mention that he knows of a wandering creature who is trying to find his sister. And I'm sure she would recognize his description right away. Thankfully, she won't have very far to travel because he's still carving his own paths up into the swamp with the help of Kuvan, of course, despite those pesky bugs. It seems like if he wants to make his father proud, he might have to end up sacrificing himself to the sickness. I suppose that would at least ensure that the bugs aren't going to go after their babies instead. So it would probably be a worthwhile thing for him to uh, settle down next to these mud piles, if just to pick up the extra grass. But yeah, now we can have Colaire and Duke to Duke finally reunite. Though very, very fittingly, Colaire is just going to be picking up all of the berries that she can get her greedy little hands on. And likewise, we'll have Kindle try his hand at the acorns. 
I'm not sure if it would be his favorite, but cracking open the shells would probably remind him of the shells on the beach. He's probably getting a little bit homesick. He is a water-bodied creature after all. So pretty soon, I think he's going to want to take little Carnelia over to the stream. So maybe he could even teach her how to swim. She's not going to be able to stay in for as long as he can, of course. But I'm sure she'll still enjoy splashing around in the waves. So, do we have any food that you guys could go after? If we could find some roots for a sunspot to dig up, or some shells for you to try to crack open. Honestly, I feel like these two would probably enjoy crab hunting more. So let's see if we can discover any crab that's off in the distance. Hopefully they're still lurking around the beaches somewhere. I'm sure these two would be very, very good at sneaking up on crabbits. We might even try heading in this direction, because it looks like there are some little grasslands tiles out in the back, so there might be more normal berries for them to pick up too. So let's see what our very last little bluebird baby of this generation is going to look like. Oh my goodness! You actually look quite a bit like your brother? Little Mila, that is very, very interesting. Oh, that must actually uh, remind Isis of the mission that she sent uh, poor little Kudukta off on. She's probably hoping and wishing that he's well, wherever he happens to be right now. Part of her might even regret having left him all on his own at such a young age. Oh boy, but it looks like we found another rogue male out here. That can't possibly be the same one. It looks like that one probably spawned right on this turn. Yeah, you are definitely very, very different. And yet again, the rogue male is sick. Well, that's interesting too. Though he does have the uh, stinky tail in his genetics. So it might not be such a terrible thing to get to know him. The only thing is we don't want him to settle down too close to our tribe mates because then he could risk getting our entire tribe sick in the process. So maybe it would be a good idea to lure him away with Colaire. They do have different immunity genes and despite her poor eyesight, their baby should be relatively healthy. So perhaps this is a little bit of a twist to her story. She wasn't only out here searching for delicious foods, but also for a little bit of forbidden love. Maybe this is an arrangement that her brother has never approved of, and he's certainly not going to be too happy to find her hanging around him now. But we will at least want to place the normal eyes into her mutation menu. And then I suppose that ever important stinky tail as well, because eventually one of our babies has to be born with that gene, right? That's like all we're waiting for. Oh, are you not interested in Colaire? That was interesting. He seems to be running away. Maybe it's because there's so many of our tribe mates in the area. He's feeling a little bit nervous with so much attention on him. And he doesn't want to draw the eye of Duke to Duke. But Carnelia's eye might just be drawn toward the water after all. It looks like she has a brand new little fishy friend to meet. I'm sure she's going to be interested to follow this guy down the stream if she can. But let's see who picked up that other leech. Oh, it's you back here, little golden paw. Thankfully, your sister's not too far away. And she has also called one of the crabbits to the shore that you guys were looking for. Excellent. So, we'll bring you over here to land a quick hit on the Crabbit. It looks like the Crabbit isn't even really paying attention to you, too. That's interesting. I guess that works out for you after all. It is way more interested in Sunspot. It's almost like she's having a conversation with the Crabbit. Maybe that's part of her strategy? To ensure that it will always be looking in her direction? so her brother can slowly chip away at its lifespan while it has its back turned. They are a very sneaky little pair. They're both very, very clever and they seem to work well together too. Now Trip, you can scoot on over to this healing fruit. You can scoot on over to this one as well. It's good to know that our ancestors weren't lying to us. Hush is currently watching on from a distance as she places down her nest so she'll be able to uh, gaze over Trip, make sure that he's not in trouble, 
but still have her baby on the next turn. And I think we're going to have Kudukta use his one turn to uh, slice down one of these poison berry bushes just for the extra food right now. So we'll have plenty to feed to our newest babies. Since there's so many toxic berry bushes around here, we're going to have to take what we can get right now. I'm actually hoping that we might be able to pull the toxic body out of their genetics too. That's one of the other reasons why I wanted to breed Trick and Hush at some point. Because if we can get some toxic bodied babies on the island, it'll be much, much easier for us to gather our food. And now it is officially time for us to say goodbye to yet another bluebird leader. So since her son isn't yet by her side, since he has been infected so by that sleeping sickness, I think she's going to have to pass the bluebird feathers off to somebody else for now. Maybe even to Carnelia? Since she is uh, Amethyst's daughter, and she knows that she bears such a devotion to the Bluebird family because of that. Yeah, I think for now we will give her both of those Bluebird feathers, just to hold on to them, until we either find Kuvan again once he wakes up, or until somebody else in the Bluebird family manages to prove themselves for the role of leadership. So I guess Carnelia is kind of going to be like our little judge and the babies are going to have to impress her now. And at last, this gives Isis and Quiver one last chance to mourn over their fallen siblings. I suppose they would even try to carve a little grave right by this tree, as the most important landmark on this entire island right now. It seems quite fitting that this is where we would lay our most important creatures to rest. So we'll say goodbye to them both, and then we'll scoot on back to our bandits to see if hopefully they were a little bit more lucky with the stinky tail. It looks like this baby doesn't have either of the genetics we were looking for. No toxic body, no stinky tail, but she does have the nimble fingers. That's a good sign. That means that she can actually help our bandits try to find those pesky shells. So they should be able to eat a little bit more freely very, very soon. And I did notice that we finally have a family to start between Colaire and our rogue male. So despite her brother's wishes, she will soon be bringing a brand new little life into the tribe. Oh no, Carnelia! Did your little fishy friend pass away too? Oh, that is so sad. The clown koi is unfortunately dead now, so you can at least pick that up for the extra food. But that's not a good way to start your love of the sea now, is it? At least Kudukta can help out Hush by picking off that leech. I guess there is a possibility that he's going to become like the guard of the tribe, just like we had back in the savannah. Maybe he figures that that's where he's meant to thrive. Oh my goodness. Do we have a little bunny stealing your berries? You know, Trick doesn't even have a single point in attack because he has the lean body instead of the uh, medium body. So I think he is truly going to want to pick those berries faster than the bunnies because otherwise he's not going to get anywhere. Now, as far as this baby's name goes, I actually wanted to give her something in memory of that old wise woman from the savannah. And I just realized too that she actually does look quite a bit like that mysterious beacon. She has the digging paw, she has the derp snout of course, despite the fact that she does not have the albinism trait, so she looks a little bit more like a bandit than a beacon. But I think we'll give her the name Rare. So Hush can remember Rarira and thank her for all of the confidence that she gave her. I don't think that Hush would be in this situation if not for that mysterious beacon after all. She was the one who guided her to the ports, and she was the one who taught her how to be confident and brave. So if not for her influence, then she wouldn't have been able to defend the bandits from the Baryina. Let's have her scoot on over here and breed again with Trek. So we can try again for that toxic body next time, as Trip resurfaces and spends a little bit of time with his brand new niece. I'm sure part of him is a little bit sad that uh, Hush didn't pick him, of course. He was probably hoping deep, deep down that she would be uh, just as smitten with him as he was with her. 
but sometimes things don't work out the way that we hoped. Unless you're Goldenpaw, of course. Goldenpaw and Sunspot the Crabbit Slayers. Or the Crabbit Whispers, even. Let's see if Sunspot can find any more way out here. Maybe sniff around or listen in those waves. I wonder if it would be easy for them to hear the uh, marching crabbits as they come out of the ocean. And it looks like we were right to inspect this area because there must be a bunny burrow nearby too. So that'll be great for you guys since you are so stealthy. If we bring Golden Paw back into the tall grass, he should be able to scoop them up with ease. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, poor little Mila. How long have you been all on your own out here? Oh, let's bring your big brother right to your side. I can't believe that we left a little baby unprotected. Oh, Adam would be so very disappointed in us right now. We're going to have to try to be a little bit more careful from here on out. Kuvan must be fuming right now. He feels like he's doing his job, despite his sleeping sickness and everything. But all of these creatures are too caught up in their own dramas to notice that a baby is being left unprotected, without her parents even, since they did just pass away. Let's hope that if we move Mila out of the nest though, then that rogue male will leave. And we don't want to risk him getting Duke to Duke sick. That is definitely not a good way to get on his side. So I guess we'll pass the day one last time before we end up the video, just to see what our new baby with Colaire and the rogue male is going to look like. To see if hopefully they have. Yes! The stinky tail that we were looking for! Oh my gosh! And you actually look almost just like your uncle too! That is so strange! He even has like that pink mane on top of his head. It might be a slightly different color, but that is eerily similar. He looks like a little pink maned squirrel. Well thank goodness for that stinky tail. That should help us not only defend ourselves from all of those pesky bugs, which uh, may have despawned over here thanks to the stinky tail. Oh my gosh! But certainly not on this side. Oh no, we have yet another Baryena knocking on the door of our bandits. Right next to our little babies. Good thing Kadukta is over here. Maybe that's why he was sent in this direction after all. You know, I had noticed that the bluebird was circling over this side of the island again. It must have been able to sense that there was a new danger brewing off in the darkness. So in the next episode, Hush will have yet another challenge to face. But if you guys have any ideas as to what we should name our newest little squirrel, then uh, do let me know. Oh my gosh, look at his immunity genes. He's a very friendly squirrel. Very, very polite, so I guess that's something to keep in mind too. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!